it's up and running and it works now and every, our boss loves it. And I guess now we're getting into the, uh, oh, what was the second uh, So the, the first thing, and one of the reasons why the course is so successful for us right now is um, it's incredibly easy to modify. I mean, you guys all have experience. Well, does anyone not have experience using Drupal themes in here? Okay, good. So, I mean, all we have to do is just kind of, you know, change out the theme, change the entire look of the store, and we have an amazing designer, so it takes us, you know, a couple minutes to do so. Um, I mentioned views. One thing I didn't mention is actually this is a taxonomy argument. So when someone uploads an image, they can tag the product with the taxonomy term as GIFs, and then it shows up in the GIFs listing. So, I mean, it's kind of a, a fairly straightforward, but very handy thing for, for me. I know that there's a session about the use of taxonomy. I'd like to see what is going to go down there. Are you teaching that commerce guy? Um, and so, yeah, we use the views. Um, it allows us just to easily change the way we display information, change the way we categorize information, move stuff around all over the place, so that if we need, if we feel the need that something's not functioning real well, we can just kind of quickly edit it because we do only have a you know three person IT staff. And so this is and this is straight out of Ubercard. Um, these are things that come straight out of the box with them. Um, we didn't have to do anything to implement them other than just kind of do a little bit of configuration. But these are things that those you know genius guys over there built. And it's super easy and you know, we can pay on the Sam and you know every state's kind of funky with you know Zip code you're in, so it makes it really easy to kind of configure these things. Um, if you take the time to read the documentation, and there is a, a really good website, uberheart.org, that we use that made a huge difference in being able to figure out exactly where you go and what you need to do. One of the solutions that was on the list there was our, our membership discounts. And one of the problems that we've been dealing with is we have several legacy systems that are all working together, and that requires a couple of logins, which don't necessarily match up because the systems don't like to play nice together. Um, and that was actually one of the problems with our old store. We did jury rig something with our old store so that the logins used to work, but then one of our other software providers changed the way they stored the database and the password and the passwords in the database, and uh, that required a separate login for the store, and it was a big pain. So this other system is already our system of record for, for logins. It's been decided that it's going to be the way to go. It's a non proof site, and it's you know, a non proof fun technology. We want to play with other things. But we still needed to give discounts to memberships. Well, how, how are we going to pull that one off? So we decided to not have logins at all and uh, deal with memberships on checkout and try to confirm that they were right. So this was our biggest, most important hurdle was kind of the big scary thing we had to deal with is um, we had to be able to apply those discounts at checkout without asking them to log in again. Um, and we needed to be able to find their information out of our proprietary database. The unfortunate part about our proprietary database is that we are not allowed to just read and write directly from SQL. We absolutely must use their API um, or we void our maintenance warranty and, and my boss would be mad. Um, so our solution was to do some digging, and we did some research and um, kind of modeled a lot of this after um, UC discounts um, and built a couple of custom modules of our own. Um, and basically, they're just web services that talk to our prior hearing database and just drag back some information for us, saying whether they're a member or not, and being able to let them look in. So we were afraid. Um, so we went ahead and used all that documentation, and we also built an additional tool for their users to look up their ID numbers if they forgot them. Most of the people have them, but sometimes they forget. Last page. No, no, no. I mean, last page of your. I'll just take you through what we ended up doing. I believe we started at the beginning. I want to buy a class note. Actually, really easy. 
easy to do. If you've got any coding experience at all and can lather, rinse, repeat from any sort of example, it turned out to be not all that difficult. Um, all of our members have an ID number that's written on their membership card. The great majority of them actually remember it, which is helpful to us. Those who don't have an opportunity to actually look it up right now, and, and we ended up building this tool. Uh, it's just a Drupal form that uh, lives in another Drupal module that uh, hits our web service, so we'll look when you have And so if you want discounts, you just write down the hex number. There you go. <laughs> well, by the way, uh, this is kind of a little cool thing I did. I did autocompletes and took all of the cities in our database and uh, made a little auto field. It was kind of fun. However, it does kind of show that we have some bad data. Some bad data. <laughs> service that we built that deals with our database and it goes in and says, okay, show me Matt Cleave. And he says he lives here. Is there anybody in your database that lives here and his name Matt Cleave? Like, oh, sure. Here he is. And here's his ID number. So with that, uh, well, perfection is the, uh, or what is it? What's the, what's the saying? This is the enemy of, of done. Yeah, the enemy of done. One of the nice things we'd like to be able to do is actually get this number after that's done. As well, it works for now. We'll get it out the door and handle it later. So, with that membership, and oh, I think it actually did it on the button. There you go. Done. Uh, I typed the number in there. You didn't have to look it up. You just typed the number in, click the apply discount. Once again, it calls our web service, says, I've got a guy here with this number who says this is his membership number. Is he a member? Yep. Send it back. Now, all this proprietary, is he a member? Look at my database stuff. May not be all that useful to you, but think about what you might be able to do with it and combining multiple systems to work together with web service or what have you. But then that's just uh, adds a line item, I think, right, to the order? Yeah, it adds a line item to the order. Negative line item to the order makes it a taxable line item, so it will charge the correct amount of tax. Um, and, it, and it seems to have worked amazingly well. Eventually, we want to work on setting up that module so that someone else can just plug in their own custom web service. If you have your own kind of data hanging out somewhere else, to be able to kind of just plug this into their current module. Um, again, it's one of those we'd love to be able to do it. We're getting there. Um, so eventually, one day, and there's information if anybody wants to help. So, oh, yep, there it is working. Uh, one of the best part. I don't know if anybody in the room went to the ROI yesterday by a step. Yeah. It's pretty awesome, right? A lot of great ideas, and I was happy to hear all that stuff because it was things that we actually ended up improving. All of our images on the old store were kind of a little strange and, and funny. We've made great improvements. There's still plenty we have to do. Um, we're, we've done a lot. 